Welcome to Beyond Perception. My name is Simon and my guests today, Marianne und Johann Niklasson. Welcome back, Marianne und Johann. Thank you, Simon. Thanks. As a brief introduction, both of you educate about what you called, I think, now, the now mushroom, Amanita muscaria and its properties to empower people in waking up and manifesting their dreams. We had two incredible conversations in 2022, around one and a half years ago, about the bigger picture of Amanita muscaria, why knowledge around it was kept secret, but also its transformative healing properties and We will link to the very insightful two conversations in the description. So if you haven't, please go listen and watch them. So in the meantime, one and a half years, almost one and a half years later, what I would love to start with as a question, do you have new insights into the myth and mystery Amanita? Yes, I think that we can say that. Hmm. <clears throat> Should I start? Yes. So I'm I'm usually very careful with what I say because when you say it on camera, you will be held responsible for it sooner or later. <laughs> um, therefore, I'm I've been very careful also in our earlier talks and conversations uh, as to what conclusions we have drawn, uh, what the information that we gather, what it points to, and uh, what that would mean for our work, what we do, and other people that are using the Amanita Muscaria for whatever reason in their life. And um, since we spoke, we have, have now traveled across Switzerland and also into Germany, where we have made our three-hour presentation for, I think it's over 3,100 people now so far. Mm. We wow. have made live presentations for, we have uh, shown the context in which we look at this element in our life, uh, the history that we can see and record the recorded history of the use, um, a modern angle of looking at it, and then presenting our perspective of how to use Samantha Muscaria as a component in personal development, or even essential development. And uh, when we have made the presentation, we do make an offer to the people that have met with us personally to for free if they choose to have it, receive a microdosing kit, which is basically capsules with the powder of Amanita muscaria. And if they decide to use it themselves, then uh, they can do so at usually uh, one take one capsule per day for about a month. And uh, since then, we have gathered a lot of information and, and heard a lot of stories from people that have used the microdosing in their own lives. And uh, from non-events as people reporting nothing happens i don't know any difference to rare occasions where someone said yeah, i felt nauseous i didn't want to do it anymore to more or less fantastic stories about personal change uh, about change in life in relationships uh, in in the whole trajectory of a person's incarnation really and um, it has confirmed what we have perceived as the potential in the Amanita Muscaria, where the chemical cocktail contains substances that introduce neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity alone is then almost like a magic ingredients for your nervous system to self-generate, heal, uh, repair, and find alternative pathways. Can I just come in here because uh, the nervous system is like a clue. This is one of the amazing things with Amanita muscaria because the two main substances that are being talked about here is ibotenic acid and muscimol. And they actually specifically work on the nervous system. So the ibotenic acid has a excitatory effect. So it's, it's uh, giving more energy and, and more drive and more focus. And the muscimol is working on the central nervous system, um, calming down the reptile brain. I think that we have talked about this before, but just when we see how we are stuck in our conditioning and our trauma story and so on, and then suddenly the nervous system gets um, the chance to regulate itself in this way, then we see that just by that, we start to come more into who we 
could be and who we truly are. And just that experience is very powerful for people because then they see that, wow, just by putting my nervous system in a different state and becoming more present, I feel like a new human being. I feel like suddenly I know who I am and where I am and where I'm going and who God is. And so, so the amount of orientation that suddenly becomes possible just by fixing the nervous system, something that you would have to go to therapy for a long time to, to get to that point, is suddenly being done quite quickly for some people. And we, we recently had a story from someone who is, I would, I would call her a psychonaut, someone who has tried everything. You know, these people who want something as a relief to their heavy life or their issues, or their just curiosity, um, have started to use microdosing just a few months ago. And with the first capsule, her life changed. This is what she says herself. Wow. Her life changed because for the first time, she could come into states of full relaxation and clarity and overview, something that she would striving to do with strong medication in the past mm -hmm. when she had um, panic attacks and other nervous system issues in her life. In a way, it's like we all have this like, or many of us, like we have this spiritual striving, right? Or we want to get somewhere where we suddenly feel m more connected, more spiritual or whatever. But I just thinking about it, I realized that just by getting ourselves out of the habitual stress and the habitual anxiety that we have identified with, that has become so much part of who we are nowadays, just by toning that down, we wake up to our natural spirituality. So we don't even have to do so much. We basically just have to, you know, disconnect from that whole build that is confusing us and, and taking us down. So what we see them, the effects of only the microdosing, um, we will talk about deep dives, which is mm -hmm. strong and large doses. But even with microdosing, we see dramatic changes for many, many people. Uh, some of the changes are maybe not so dramatic, but still very significant. And for some people like this woman, there's a complete change of their life from now on. Everything is different. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see that on, on physical levels, like or organic levels, where your body, thanks to the neuroplasticity, might find other pathways for healing or repairing that were blocked or we, we were set to have a certain thing happening in the same way for our whole life. And suddenly there is an option. So natural physical healing, we've seen a lot. So many people have reported uh, natural, what I call the natural healing of disease and issues. Uh, we see a similar thing happening on the emotional level where people's emotional life is becoming calibrated and balanced so that um, emotional inflammation like trauma or other issues finds a way to be integrated mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. consumed in a way that is very beneficial for the person. I would like to come in here. This is something fascinating because it seems like there is some sort of a intelligence that is uh, guiding you to the next layer of trauma or that your system is ready to integrate in a way. And and um, it's doing that in a, in a very smooth and organic way. <laughs> And I, for example, I've been spending many years of my life doing inner child work or trauma integration work and so so I would say that, you know, I have done my inner child work, you know, I understand my story and my trauma and so on. And, but but with Amanita, and of course, also with the understanding of how to work with yourself, of course, it's, it's helpful to have an orientation of how to work with yourself. But, but um, even with that, I can go with Amanita and with the microdosing even just to places where I can be with my consciousness, with my being at the place where the trauma happened, like in the very early childhood space of just feeling utter aloneness, for example, it's one of those, one of, one of the, the core wounds that most of us have in the society that we maybe know about because we all know how people get born nowadays but we don't we are not in touch with it and we don't know what an impact that actually has on the manifestation of our lives because we are manifesting our lives from what we assume as true about ourselves and about the world and you know based on the state of our nervous system 
and and then to be able to be there and be held in a, in a being space and to recognize uh, what is going on there and then just by being able to feel it being able to integrate it but feeling it in a new way mm -hmm. uh, many people that work with trauma they come into this shock of suddenly re-experiencing or mm -hmm. being confronted with this wall of strong emotions and feelings which naturally then makes us hesitant or even protect ourselves from it mm. But with this neuroplasticity, it seems as if you get another location from where you can mm. approach the traumatic experience so that it's it's you, but it's also not you. It's more your personality that you look at. You find mm. a different anchor, a different position within yourself from where you can approach this, mm. which also really facilitates a better way of digesting, of understanding mm. or only experience, even if the trauma is is an event that you have no cerebral context for or you have no idea what it really was but there is an emotional inflammation or, a, or mm. there's emotional um, subsystem that that is we call trauma but there's no real event that you can connect it to even then just being a little bit on the side of it makes it more possible to mm. allow yourself to feel these stored feelings mm. and in that way i would say heal the issue or come to the conclusion that was necessary mm. or repair that setting in your system. So this emotional layer is something that many people that are working with microdosing, they come into and they notice these effects and people around them notice the effect mm. in the person that is using the manita. Mm. But then we also see changes then in your mental state, in your thought world, how those very set pathways of how we habitually think about things, how we judge things, how we look at things, how we explain things for ourselves, also loosen up and become more flexible, which makes it easier to approach life in a, a way that you might not have in your adult life before, uh, which also have dramatic changes for people. So just the nervous system flexibility, the plasticity, the, mm. the firing up of nervous uh, pathways that normally are passive have dramatic changes on these levels. Now, the physical, the emotional, the mental are just the three lowest level, as far as I'm concerned, of our human life. We also have spiritual aspects and many levels above. And even there, people report uh, dramatic changes. We can come to that later. That happens mm -hmm. usually then in the deep dive settings. I think something I want to add here when we're talking about neuroplasticity is that, that um, Amanita Muscaria has this special feature that not only does it bring in the loosening up of the of the neural pathways the neuroplasticity also the psilocybin brings in neuroplasticity but it brings a strong vertical alignment in there so we are not losing ourselves in yet another dream maybe on a higher level but it's still a dream somewhere on the horizontal but actually waking up to a vertical alignment that we can that is that is guiding us that in a way and where we, we talked before about the now, right? The now mushroom. Mm -hmm. Even in the microdosing, we see that this element of now is what gives us a new ground to stand on. Because with our personality, we are basically locked in time and our trauma is locked, locking us in time, one could say. It's like anchors in time mm -hmm. where we can't really move on. We, we have to experience fully everything that has happened in our lives. And by getting this new ground in time, uh, in now, and, and becoming centered in the now, we can start to go a different direction in our own development. So we call, we use the word alignment. And with that, we mean that somehow that chemical cocktail in the mushroom removes the attraction or the identification with the distraction of ourselves. Mm. The parts of our personality that we normally identify with and believe is so important. My title, my job function, what people see me as. And that becomes less important or maybe even disappears so that you experience yourself as that original being that came in this life. And when you identify with this being, we call it the essence, um, the view of life changes quite dramatically because what might be important for your personality it might mean nothing for your essence. Your essence is usually then also found as being quite childish or at a, at a young age. That's usually where the 
the separation happens where we are starting to focus on our personality and what we do and what people think we are instead of who we really feel we are inside. So when we return to essence, we might have to allow it to be in the, at a younger age for quite a while before it catches up and grows up and become adult. So yeah. yeah. So all of this is work that that is that is facilitated with microdosing. Mm -hmm. It's not that the microdosing does that for you. Um, mm -hmm. It but if you are having the intention of becoming a more unified and whole human being, and of actually becoming a partaker in this in this creative universe, then it's a wonderful tool. And I think we can already start to talk about the deep dives. You know, like since the one and a half years. That we have so talked can about. I can I just yeah. um, ask you something? What I'm curious about how you're experiencing Amanita is Amanita a gateway to aid oneself to plug into one's own healing properties to come back to oneself, or is Amanita doing that to me or you or someone? I will not say that we have a definite answer. And I think that it can be detrimental to someone's worldview and maybe even religious belief system to claim certain things in a very solid way. Let's leave that door open a little bit. Mm -hmm. The way we approach, or at least I approach Amanita Muscaria, is this chemical cocktail that opened doors within me. Um, a way of looking at life is to see life as we are receiving this body with which we can interact with the physical world. It's like an antenna into the physical world and we can see and sense and hear what is going on in the physical world. But we also have an emotional body and it's also like an antenna with which we can experience feelings and emotions. And then we have like a mental body with which we can experience thoughts. And sometimes we can even achieve thinking by ourselves, which is mm -hmm. quite the feat today. <laughs> and if you look at it that way, these are extensions of our true being. Like our nervous system is like an antenna with which we can pick up feelings and thoughts and sensations from our body. Then what is the link to reality? It is the link that is our own inner experience that we can achieve when we center ourselves, then we, we can link up and align all these different levels of existence within ourselves. So we can experience life in the physical, in the emotional, in the mental, and even higher states. And there, from there, experience more objectively the truth and or, or the environment that we are in, or reality as we experience it. So I I have chosen to look at the Amanita Muscaria not as an outside entity that is providing me uh, experiences or providing me information. I more look at it as this is uh, uh, possibly an entity, but the substances in me are opening doors within my own perception mm. so that I myself can more consciously relate with my sub and super consciousness. The door is open, it's up to me to use it. I could say to that that um, my experiences early on in on, on higher doses with the mushroom was that it was constantly, you know, like saying it's a sentient being. Let's let's assume that for a moment. If it is, then it would always tell me, "Well, I'm you. So what do you want? Mm -hmm. Don't look at me." It was like for me, it was like like a Montessori teacher or some some entity that if it is an entity. All it would want is for me to wake up to my own creator, cr creator nature, you know, that I am the creator, you know, that would be like the intention that I found that I was constantly being um, directed towards. Wake up to your own creation and that you are the one who's creating this reality. So if you're asking questions to that outer entity or that factual entity or your imagined projection, then maybe that is what your subconsciousness would tell you. I am you. Give me instructions. Ask me questions. Uh, but you're basically asking yourself just a different part of yourself that you normally don't have access to. Mm -hmm.
And it's also something we let people play with, like when we uh, guide people into deep, di deep dives too, because we have this tendency to have this outer authority that we pray to and ask questions to and want healing from and, and be good towards and so on. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's not too, it's nothing wrong with that. But there is something about, you know, what happens if you actually ask the question inside, you know, have, you know, assume that that authority actually lives inside of you. There is an authority, there is a higher, you know, being, in, but, but maybe the direction is towards inside than up instead of somewhere out there. People talk about empowering. I think it's self-empowering to decide that uh, it is me. It's my self and super consciousness. There's no other entity I have to pray for or ask for permission. It's all in me. And if you do that, you become more self-responsible. Mm. And you are looking at life from the perspective of self-activation instead of praying for things from the mm. outside. Psychologically, it makes a difference. If it's actually matching reality, it has a factual difference also in your way of living it. And just to mention that then, if it is so, well, well in our experience, what happens for most people is that this door between your subconsciousness and your waking consciousness is open. What does that make possible? In, in our experience, you suddenly get access to states that you are normally accessing when you're dreaming or maybe under strong hypnosis, like the theta brainwave states, where you are, or your subconsciousness is extremely suggestive. It, it is receiving instructions and then paints it. For instance, you watch a movie with dinosaurs running around and, and your heart is racing, your brain is trying to flee, and you have all these physical reactions because your subconsciousness does not know that these dinosaurs are not actually in the room. So it is being projected into you and you have responses. What if you take charge of this input? What if you intentionally seed things into your subconsciousness about who you are? What is happening in your life? How do I deal with opportunities showing up in my life? Who am I? What do I want? And we called it then in the past a way of actually overwriting your personality and giving yourself your life new instructions as how to live and we have learned that we we don't receive what we want in life we receive the reflection of who we really are the content of ourselves is being projected into the world and we are receiving that reflection back if we have a lot of fear we will receive a response to that if we had a lot of faith in or, or feeling of wealth we will receive a response to that so the content of our consciousness is quite important for us. The content and the limitations of our imagination, because we can look at this life and see, oh, this is as much as I can mm. imagine for mm. myself or for the society or for this planet or, mm. you know, yeah. So therefore we, we, we have these sayings. One of the sayings is, imagine what you cannot imagine. And it is easier when using a Manita Muscara, thanks mm. to the plasticity mm. for you to actually start to manifest a different life for yourself by imagining yourself different, imagining your situation differently, living as if something else was your reality by suggesting this, to, basically self-hypnosis mm -hmm. and giving yourself these suggestions and then see how these manifest mm -hmm. in the world. So many people that do even microdosing unintentionally come into very strange manifestational episodes. I had a question. I just lost it. But um, from my own experience, I think I shared that with you. I'm microdosing. I'm testing it um, for quite a bit of time. And over the last three years, I really dove into the creative process, really a, a framework or method methodology where you become aware of what you would life, what you would love your life to be, but then also a set of tools to bring that into a reality to not just have it as a dream but to live the dream and and i mean it's hard to say what is the cause but there's definitely a correlation in also what you're sharing how i'm experiencing in being far more grounded calm a relaxation of my nervous system but also a support to to my imagination and neuroplasticity, like what I set my focus on, it's 
far easier to bring that into life than historically would i say and that it speeds up continuously it really um that that's something i really experienced for myself so you spoke about the micro dosing a little bit but then also i think you wanted to start sharing a bit about your experiences with high doses and um also different levels of consciousness or experiences that's something you mentioned before do you want to pick up on that sure you want to start should i um when you say should I, then I think that you have something that you already <laughs> <Okay>. want to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so what we call these events deep dives. Um, yeah. Again, with respect for everyone else that are approaching Amani Tamaskaria from whatever direction they do, we do not um, want to propose that our version of this is the right one or that we know more than anyone else. Uh, we just have our approach, and this is our angle uh, approaching the, the um, Amanita Muscaria and what it makes possible. So we have named it Deep Dives. Others might call it ceremonial um, um, sessions or ceremonies or shamanic experiences. In a deep dive, um, the participant or the deep diver is taking enough Amanita Muscaria to sedate the personality. Uh, the personality is no longer what you actually identify with. How much, how much is enough? Well, uh, for, for very sensitive people, five to eight grams can be enough. Uh, I mean, even maybe too much. And for others, uh, 20, 30 grams might be what is necessary. But then this varies from time to time. So for one person, 15 grams was enough at one point. Another time it might be eight or another time it might be 20. There is no real rule. And I think that is important for everyone who listens to understand. There is not about, it's not about how many grams you're taking. There are so many other factors that are meaningful. So, Hold on. so do yeah. you, do you choose the amount intuitively? Do you start taking something, then you feel into it and then you, add something to it or how do you approach it very like specifically so our setting and our set is that um, it is first of all a very safe space to do this experience in where you have at least one sitter a sitter is someone who can care for your needs if your body no longer functions the way you used to if your consciousness is somewhere else your body might still be alive and kicking and it we call it the pet your pet can become quite active. Your pet has needs. Your pet mm -hmm. might not be able to communicate because there's no one home to listen to the need for mm -hmm. the toilet, for instance. Mm -hmm. It's quite often so that we notice that uh, someone is deep, deep, deep in a deep dive and their, their pet, their body is becoming restless. Mm -hmm. And we approach the individual and we look into the eyes and we see the normal person is not at home, but we can still communicate with the pet. And then we can carefully check in, are you okay? And the pet is sitting up and might not respond with words, but then we can ask it, do you need to go to the bathroom? And then the pet says, and then that was what was needed, but the, the owner was not at home. The one that the pet normally communicates with, the one that can tell the pet, yeah, I'm going to in the meeting now, I will go to the toilet later, or yeah, we can go to the toilet right now. So saying that I have to say this because it's so important to understand that um, the way that we look at a deep dive or a high dose can only happen in a safe way with someone being with you at all times. It can last for 12 hours or more. Mm. And during this time, you don't know what, what will happen, when it will happen. And um, there are several aspects to the deep dive that you have to be aware of. There is a, a something that we could call the interruption. But we, I just want to, because the question was about uh, dosage, I just yeah. would like to answer that. We have a little bit of a, a measure about like 0 0.2 gram per kilo body weight. This is a bit how we mm. how we orient. Mm. And we have like an average around 15 gram would be like a deep dive dosage. And then we do it so that people, some people, they have an intuitive number where we say, I want to have this and this amount of, of grams. And then we we trust their intuition. 
and uh, so, so we have these different ways of coming to how much we give but it's it's an individual conversation we have with every participant and then if they feel during the deep dive that well i actually need some more then we're also open to give more so we really tune into where how much does this individual need to come to the place where they need to go with the intention that they have set and with you know with with what they are about to experience so when you, you take enough then there are certain things starting to happen with your system uh, usually there is a slight nausea um, the body is wondering what the f is going on here the stomach is responding to what is coming in not always but it can be it's and then um, what is also quite often usual is that um, people are feeling a sense in their body as if they were drunk but it's not not on all levels the same. It's more the bodily function of being a little bit sluggish, of not having correct balance. Mm -hmm. uh, and that would be explained by the substances in Amanita muscaria attaching to the same GABA receptors as alcohol does. And that would be a similarity. And then um, what we have noticed is that there is an interruption into the, nerve, uh, the, the perception of time. That might be the most important thing to start with then. This is why we, we use terminology like the now mushroom, because it seems as if time is being, or our perception of time is being interrupted on a regular basis, in a specific rhythm even. You know, on my last deep dive, I managed to um, tell myself which frequency there was. I recorded it and I could later um, calculate with what frequency it for me was at that time. And this interruption is happening to your thoughts, it's happening to your speech, it's happening to your feeling states, and it's happened to your body. And if the interruption is strong enough, you will no longer be able to walk. You might be able to sit up, but then suddenly all functions are turned off and your body falls to the floor. Yeah, so this is one of the things that where, why we also say that it's really important that there is a sitter there if somebody goes into a higher dose experience, because this you might actually feel that you are strong and stable and you get up and no, no, I can do this and bomb. And then you actually, if nobody would be there to hold you, you would just crash to the floor or, or mm -hmm. drop whatever you're holding. This is this is one of the things that is physically risky. And there are plenty, hundreds yeah. of reports of people, yeah. uh, many from Russia, where people have taken a high dose and then waking up with knocked out teeth or, or a broken bone or something wow. like that. Yeah. So we, we really urge people to be, especially the enlightened masters, the people that already tried everything and they can do everything and they are so confident, especially those people need to be very careful because against this, they stand no chance. Mm -hmm. It's a physical reality that the interruption happens. So it's a physical, emotional and mental mm -hmm. constant interruption of your flow, the mm -hmm. linear succession of firing in your neurons in your brain system that gives the appearance of time hmm. this i thought a few minutes ago now i'm thinking this i'm about to think this it it hmm. feels that it's a linear thing however um, later in the session you can come into such a gap between thoughts or between feelings or between um interruptions in your in your um body where the now opens up you enter into now which means that all concepts of time are now gone. There is no past, there is no future, it's only now. And I have the tendency to believe that that is actually a more true representation of reality. We just don't experience it such. We, we have this concept of time, a linear progression of events. But in reality, also logically, the only time that exists is the ever-present now. And in the Namanita Muscara deep dive, you may get the opportunity to experience what that actually is. It's like many people report that, and we also have our own experience of this. Like it's like a stepping, you know. Many people say like stepping through the veil, you know, like like stepping through the veil of of time and of our horizontal life and our identification, and so into now, into a, a much greater now, where we, where people can you know sit up in a deep like, I'm 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 now I'm in the now now you know or or for me like my first deep I was like oh I discovered eternity I'm I, I am eternity you know and 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 but then oh but this is now so there is like there is and we have seen now so many people have the same experience where they basically come through time into now and it's startling and, for many of them and then we can start to mm -hmm. many people also have these 
cosmic experiences where actually the consciousness can go and start to understand aspects of the cosmos and travel to places and and get get like orientations towards certain themes or or like maps of certain aspects of reality or how things work mm. so um i think that one can explain that with the detachment from uh, what you normally identify as the limitation of your senses limitation of your feelings and emotions limitation of your thoughts if these limitations are temporarily moved and with temporarily i'm talking about hours at a time then mm. suddenly your consciousness and and your yourself can travel not only horizontally in this world mm. but also vertically which means mm. to different frequencies of existence to different mm. frequencies of consciousness so many people report also that like the the thinking can become very very fast. It, it's like it's like you are in this slow pace of time, and then suddenly do, 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 and it, it becomes like almost like a singular understanding that you can, can come to places where you have immediate understanding of things. There's no more thought process. It's just understanding, mm. seeing, knowing, direct yeah, we, knowing. You call it downloads, or yeah. uh, you just have like an apparition. It's just all there. But but then when you come back down from those places, we say it up down because in some way it is some sort of a ascension experience. You can feel how you're you're slowing down back into matter or into time or into this machine of your brain and this um, biological um, apparatus that and you can then you, the limitations come in and the understanding becomes distorted or you don't even have access anymore you kind of know i understood something but i can't think it anymore i can't grasp it because this machine cannot hmm. so we actually get a chance to step out of of this into a much higher reality hmm. which can in some cases be almost a bit traumatizing it can be hmm. almost a little bit scary because it's like to your person to the person, to the mm -hmm. mind that might still be somewhere trying to understand mm -hmm. or trying to hold on to some sort of identity. So here, it can be like a death process, really, the, the ego death or the, yeah, dying out of who you think you are into a greater reality. And depend on, depending on how good you are at that, you might be more or less comfortable with where you're going. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is what we see. We get, we are like little ants being catapulted out into, you know, the cosmos and oh my god reality is so much bigger than what we ever thought but then we come back into this body we come back into this brain and this nervous system and this physical you know reality and then now what you know how do we deal with having this greater alignment this greater understanding this this superior orientation we still have to do the dishes we we still you know <laughs> yeah have mm. our story we still have our programs running our reality mm. here but that maybe we need with to a new on. perspective then yeah this is what many people report and they say yeah i'm still here people might not notice that there's much different but i have a suddenly much larger space mm. inside of me in which i can navigate mm. my experience and, so and this is i think is fascinating the, the chance to really rise in consciousness yeah. so there are there are maybe 10 major aspects of the deep dive that we could go into one can be that the, we spoke about the alignment if you tune in to that part in you that originally dropped down into this body, that part of you that were born out of your mother's womb, and that original being um, that came out as an unwritten personality book, but still is something, if you identify with that, you might also suddenly perceive or sense the purpose with why, with the purpose that you came here with. If you have a special mission or if you have something specific to work with or you're attracted to certain things that can become very clear so the the things that your personality were busy with trying to avoid pain over life or trying to avoid mm -hmm. bad situations or trying to survive <laughs> in, in different strategies that no longer have such strong meaning for you if you connect to your original uh, self and your original essence and its purpose in life one among many many things that you can experience uh, we, we, I think I want to enter into the manifestational thing well, because I think that you're interested in that thing. Yeah, I just want to say, yeah. add something here that we have been, you know, yeah, thinking about in the deep dives. One of the, one of the coordinates, let's say, that that many people come to when they rise in consciousness, has to do with with Christ, has to do mm -hmm. with Christ consciousness, 
and we were a bit hesitant to talk about about this but we but we want to mention it because it is it is happening so many times that people actually arrive at a place where they're waking up to their realization of being christ you know it's not like oh i met jesus christ and then he talked to me and gave me his blessings no it is more like a waking up to our own christhood inside or find our consciousness on that level which one could call them the Christ consciousness level. Mm. And, and I have to say, I, I was proud to be not religious. I did study all kinds of worldviews and philosophies and esoteric teachings, also the religions, but not because I felt I had a need for a God or, or a greater power outside of myself. Um, so it is a little bit with, with the scientific mind being hesitant to make these proclamations and make these statements, but it's undeniable that many people that do a deep dive, they go through stages of, I am me, mm. I am Jesus, mm. I am Christ, I am God, mm. the manifester. Where does this come from? And it's so poignant, it's so clear, and it's been stated so many times by so many people that we start to believe that it is a factual, actual reality, that the special experience in Amalita Muscaria makes available to us, not generates, not creates, but we can perceive it, we can take part in it. And it's startling for many people. Uh, it's startling for someone who is religious because then that experience of Christ, being Christ, goes against so many ways of looking at Christ mm -hmm. as it is in a religious context. And it's startling for others that are proud Buddhists or um, have different worldviews or different religious tendencies to suddenly be Jesus and have Christ consciousness. Um, in fact, our experiences and our observations up until now makes it more or less clear that experience like that is the origin of what mm -hmm. later degenerated into the religions. The origin was a live tradition of using such states to be the creator, to tune in and align and to imagine to project pour down feeling states water this creation of yours with very strong positive feeling states we call it faith we bathe our image in faith and in that and speak the word we speak the word or write the word that is the act that makes things manifest and this is our conclusion. This is our working model at the time. And we have not found anything that goes against it. It's constantly being confirmed by people's experiences. Now, that and, is not new with manifestation, right? No, it, but, hmm. but just to, just to add to, to this, like when we read now old scriptures, like the, the, the Gospel of Thomas or like the Nakamadi scriptures or so, like, like really original Christianity, you know, scriptures, and then with this, with the experience of that, that Amanita Muscaria opens up for, for us and for people, suddenly reading those scriptures becomes just like, oh yeah, oh yeah, wow, it is more like a map or, or, a, or a handbook or, or instructions of how to use these states of consciousness or these understandings or how to, to you know, from those coordinates actually then use that understanding in this world and in this life. From it's that perspective these scriptures they look like a manual like to a coffee machine you know you pour in the beans here you pour in the water there and then you press the button make sure you have electricity you wait for 10 minutes whatever it, it is such clear and simple language from that specific perspective and it's so overwhelmingly matching it's matching word by word and suddenly it is as if you have received the key to unlock what these scriptures actually were talking about and not in a in a very fantastical way but in a matter of fact way 
like a normal teacher would instruct you how to use the coffee machine. Yeah, of course, you press this button, you do this. That's how we now read these scriptures. That's how we now can easily understand them without layers of layers of layers of religious interpretation. Hmm. Very word by word. Now the words have then lost their meaning or started to mean something else. And that each such transformation has generated layers of misunderstandings and, and followers and religious uh, directions. We, it's easy to see that you can trace it back. But when we read the Nag Hammadi scriptures and, and the books from the Essenes, uh, the, the Coptic original writings, it reads like a manual, like Joe Dispenza would write a book. Do like this, do like this, do like this. And suddenly we can understand it. We can fully understand it. That makes totally sense. That's my own discover, really. <laughs> and, uh, that the way I lived, and I think that's the default way of how we are experiencing life is a reactive orienting orientation. We are reacting to our circumstances and we are not really conscious about what we want to bring into existence or experience or how we would like to live life by, you know, we, we, we're not creative in that sense. We're creating all the time, some kind of experience of reality, but we're not conscious about what we actually would like to experience independent on the circumstances and kind of, kind of going back to that blank sheet of what, Where am I? What is what I would love to experience? How would I love to be? Yeah, experiencing life and what 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 are the relationships I would love to have? The things I would love to experience to bring into life. That has been something uh, that has that kind of shift in my own orientation relates very much to what you're ex what I'm listening to you that that initiated a huge transformation in terms of also in, in recognizing who I'm not <laughs> and, and getting a deeper awareness and sense of who I am or might be, but definitely what I, what I, not what I think about myself and um, having more space between my identity, who I think my, I am, my, my, my thoughts, my feelings, um, my beliefs, my conditioning, but not being, not being oriented so much by, It's, it's more like a commentary function in that sense. Um, and so we, we are like yeah, uh, sleeping and dreaming creators, not aware of that we are 24-7 generating our life. And the proof in the pudding is just to look around and see. Mm. That is what you're generating. Mm. Right? And also what you just said, I think is very interesting. I, I have also myself often the experience that I was like waking up to my own passivity. And how often I am still not aware of that I could actively create mm. situation. This is something like we are really guiding also people in, in our training. So when we work with people with a microdosing, because there's so much unawareness still, even if we work with, with a tool mm. like Amanita Moscaria, mm. it's, a, it's a continual reveal to ourselves who we actually are and where we are still asleep and then wake up to that aspect and wake up to this passivity and realize, oh, I cannot be an active creator of my relationship. I can't be an active creator of my home or, or my health or whatever. So th this is fascinating that you, what you just said also, that because it's a reality. We are just waking up to it through different doors in different ways, but the reality is the reality, right? My own recognition is fundamentally we're living in a mental universe and thoughts literally <laughs> a greater experience of it. But mostly one is not really aware of that. And one thing I'm curious about, because that's something I've experienced with my myself doing it, but I think that's also what many people who are consuming plant medicine, for example, do they project their own capabilities or um, even mystical or magical properties onto the stimulant. But what I'm hearing from you, it's more like um, a catalyzer to recognize your, your own mystical properties, if you will. So how do you see it with the people you're working with? Does it create a dependency or two 
Amanita in that sense, or is it like, can one get addicted to it as a means to transcend this limited experience? Yeah, we see that it has really no addictive um, qualities. We rather see that people, um, that there is a natural flow of where you feel attracted to it and then it tastes good and you want to take it but then you might forget it or then suddenly you have an aversion to it it doesn't taste good you feel it tastes like yuck and then you know sometimes people they have an intense deep dive or intense process and then after that like we had somebody you now for five months it was like oh i don't want to even you know see it and then naturally it just starts to be you know okay i start again hmm. and and then since it builds up in the body, you actually need less and less over time. So for also for us now, when we microdose, so, so we need very little to to tune in again. In fact, the receptors that are in your nervous system, they become more. So the number of receptors working with Amanita muscaria are increased in numbers and becoming more sensitive. This is what research has shown, which is fascinating. Uh, why do human beings have receptors for this mushroom? On how to think about it. Yeah, there's actually muscarine receptors in the in our you know they're called that way. Mm -hmm. But there's only two mushrooms that have that. It's the Amanita muscaria and the Amanita pantherina that have muscarine in them. Mm -hmm. But we have muscarine receptors. So there's no other plant. Uh, Not as far as I know. Maybe there are. But okay, that's interesting. Um, this is fascinating, isn't it? Um, absolutely. Yeah. What other door openers are there? Why is this door opener so specific? Why can it be that this has generated then religions and pathways where many generations of people openly, commonly used it, and then it fell into the shadows of memory or, or past and, and is forgotten? Many people call it like the door to eternity, actually. Mm -hmm. I've heard and read that many times. I just read something interesting, a commentary about the um, the original te teachings of, of Jeshua or of, of Jesus or these these gospels, right? Mm -hmm. And there was somebody saying, like a commentary, he spoke to you from eternity and you understood it from time or in time. And this for me is a very good de description how when we are in eternity, there is a different uh, reality that we are, that, you know, we are describing a higher, greater aspect of reality. But then when we are in time, we can only misunderstand it because we don't have the, the apparatus to actually perceive it properly. And it's a good example of a saying, yeah. uh, saying of, of Christ or Yeshua or Jesus, which only makes sense in this context. Um, if, if you don't have this concept, you have to make very strange jumps in your logic to be able to explain what was actually meant. So, yeah, that, that's a whole subject. And I think that we will dive deeper into that and, and actually reconnect. In a way, it almost feels like it is the return of Christ. Hmm. Not as a single individual, hmm. but as some esoteric teaching has said, as a group entity, as someone who is appearing inside of us, through hmm. us. That's the calling. Um, hmm. in, in happy and good moments, I choose to look at it that way. This is the return of Christ, of Christ consciousness. And when, when that simple fact arrives, we can see how silly and misleading all the religions are, especially the different versions of Christianity, which, something, which is something extremely simple, a simple matter of fact that you can have as your own experience without any interpretations or stories. So absolutely fascinating and makes a lot of sense you also wanted to share a little bit about manifestation or its manifestation properties i can share a little story of mine where that would fit in very well i think so it was last year my wife had this street dog follow her home we let him in gave him some food went out back on the streets, came back again. And over a couple of times, we just let him stay. The next day, a neighbor told us, this is a Belgian Malinois. So this is a protection dog. And in this moment, I was like, ah, oh, this is interesting. Three months ago, we were talking about wanting a protection dog. 
and we discussed it and then we forgot about it. But in that moment, we talked about it must be a young one because we have an older male dog and it might create conflict. And that was the puppy protection dog now with us. It was interesting, I thought. And then the and then I gave him a name. I called him Ramana. Ramana is an Indian saint, sage, a saint. And the next day, my wife discloses to me that that for the last weeks or months, she had a daily intention while consuming Amanita Mus Muscari. Eh? And she, her intention or her little mantra was, and she's a dog trainer as well, so she had this mantra, may all the dogs follow me easily by the grace of Ramana. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, that was quite an interesting example of um, how you think, how you can attract uh, situations in a non-linear, synchronistic way, and uh, left us laughing and speechless for a moment. Yeah, we had this little puppy called Ramana, and he actually just follows without leash. Yeah, it's interesting for the very least. It matches yeah. our experiences mm -hmm. of of the manifestational techniques um imagine what you cannot imagine because your life and your world right now is a result of what you have imagined so far if you really want to have an intentional change you have to learn to imagine what you cannot imagine at this point bring something new into your life pour faith into it faith is a high feeling state of certainty. You bathe your image or your vision in certainty, as if it is now, is realized. You can even amplify that by learning to remember what has yet not passed. To learn to remember the moment when whatever needed to happen for you to have this vision come alive, remember when it happened. You're strengthening the suggestion you're giving to yourself. It's this a fact already, and you pour your faith into it. That feeling state, just like Goddard talks about the feeling state. And then you speak it out. The way you anchor your manifestation into the world is through the mantra, is through the prayer, is through the incantation, is through your words, just like the magician. You speak it into reality. And if you do all these things at the same time, your world is transformed. And how do we notice this? If we give instructions to our subconsciousness or superconsciousness, how do it respond? Well, the experience is that we have to look at it as it comes from the periphery. At the corner of an eye, an occurrence, a word, a book, a dog, something happens and we just need to be attentive. Those are instructions from our sub and super consciousness as to where we take the next step, our next line of action, where we in incarnation have to play our part for this to happen. Mariana has often had this example of, oh, I was in a Manita Muscaria session and I was wishing that I would learn Chinese. And now it's gone several months and I don't know a single word. Well, <laughs> did you open that book? Mm. Did you see that online mm. ad? Did you meet a friend of someone who spoke Chinese? Mm. What did you do mm. as your part, which is your self-activation mm. part? And this is mm. a very typical example of what you just mentioned. If we are attentive from the periphery, it appears. And mm. if we pick up on it and make our part, if we act according mm. to, if, if we walk mm. the talk, mm. then the manifestational is inevitable, just like a seed becomes a plant. A seed can't become an elephant. It becomes the plant. Okay. Hmm. I just want to add to that because there it is actually true that we get an amplifier in our manifestational um, capacity through all these different elements that Amanita Muscaria is bringing in. And then it becomes very important to understand from where and why do you manifest what hmm. you are manifest. Because you might manifest just a lot of things that you are then stuck with hmm. that you might not really, you know, 
that that might not really be what your essence or your soul or your higher self wanted, but what a part of your personality really wanted and saw mm. as the solution to your life mm. problem. So this is where the path of coming more and more home inside mm. of your essence and more and more actually consciously align to your own source. So that you manifest so, from the right place. So that there mm. is a poor down of that which then naturally will manifest because it's who you you come from your being mm. from the I am this mm. is this is, you actually become that which you want to see manifest mm. in the world and not so much the and then I think and then I do and so this is all techniques that we can use when we are in the right place but we actually believe that to be in the right place is the most important thing mm. and that's why in our training then we spend yeah. the first half year just instructing people to learn to differentiate between personality and mm. essence in themselves. Mm. If we would give the manifestational techniques to personality, it would generate mm. years of bad karma mm. with your best intention. And, and it's the same for us. We are not exempt of this. You know, our personality parts that we are identified with without even being aware of it, they believe that the solution is to, you know, make and make so, so much money or to travel mm -hmm. to this place or whatever. And then we can manifest that, sure. Mm -hmm. But is it really, you know, what our higher being mm -hmm. wanted to live through us? And, and, and then there is a completely different path how that might take place in the now, not in the linearity mm -hmm. that our personality can think out. But like you say, in the periphery, in a much more mm. mystical kind of way. And the first step in, in learning to manifest is to learn to not manifest. The Wu Wei, okay? Because we are constantly manifesting, day and night. And to learn to not do that is as important as later on learning how to actually manifest what you want in your life. Makes a, makes a lot of sense how I come to recognize the creative process it's a journey between where you are and where you want to go and you can choose where you want to go as a compensation of what you don't want basically and that is really motivated by fear and so you perpetuate experience of limitation and fear independent on what you actually then get in terms of stuff but it it's not really the answer you're looking for <laughs> Or you can choose what you love as an expression of what you truly care about for the sake of it, not to get you something. And that's really, you could say, is a vision coming from a place of wholeness. So you're not trying to get something out of that. And that's my own recognition that actually brings an experience of wholeness alive because that's the motivation you're coming from. And and that's kind of, and that that's, when I'm listening to you, that's that's kind of very much ma matching my own understanding and need to be aware of what you love and what it is that you orientate yourself towards and allow yourself to imagine it and to feel it and to see it in your mind. But at the same time, you must also know where you are. You must know your own shit and your own, <laughs> your own reaction so let's, ten let's tendencies. That, you know? I think this is yeah. a crucial yeah. element in any type of manifestational aspiration. Um, we are finding ourselves in a, in a form of status quo, which is actually not true because we are either going down or up, but we're finding ourselves in, in a boring situation or a similar situation we need to get out of somehow. Mm -hmm. So the manifestational technique sounds very promising. Oh my God, I just have to imagine and believe in a different life mm -hmm. and I will get that. That's true, but there are several elements of manifestation that needs to be incorporated. Often people who are moving towards something that they really wash, uh, they really wish for and long for in their life. What the first thing they they encounter is an issue or a problem, an anchor or a block, and we call it anchors because it it is right in front of you, but in reality there's a chain to the anchor behind you, and you can't move forward until you have experienced whatever is hold or held in this anchor. So many people that start to move into manifestation, they are immediately disappointed because the first thing they encounter mm. is the issue with the father, their financial lack, or whatever else is an anchor in time that they have not dealt with. So a, a good manifester is not only good at imagining things, is not only good at remembering what has not happened yet, but, or what hasn't happened in the past, but is also capable of experiencing 
more and more and more emotionally. Mm. Because you, if you can increase your bandwidth of what you can allow yourself to experience, mm. pain is part of life. Pain is not something you run away mm. from. Pain is something that you experience and maybe learn something from mm. or gain a capacity or gain a quality or increase something in yourself, a capacity to feel. So the ancient Stoics, they were not experts in not feeling anything. They were experts in feeling everything. Mm. And if you can include everything, if you move towards that goal of yours that you put out for yourself, you can face and digest everything that comes between you and your manifestational goal. And that is the key, or one of many, but there's mm. an important key. It's not going to be a dance on roses. It's going to be a, an evolutionary development mm. process. And you have to engage with it with an open heart and allow yourself to feel whatever. The mm. successful people that can manifest, they go through rain and ice and water and fire. They don't care. Mm. They are open to experience anything. And that's why they reach their goals. But it also then opens up an unconditional life experience because you're not resisting. I, I, that's at least how I recognize my own personality or like when I work with people, it's basically the idea is something is not okay to fear through. So I'm resisting it. And that creates an experience of suffering you know, because the pain at some level is there, but I'm not allowing myself to feel it. If you want to master manifestation and learn the alchemical principles of creating, then join my workshop, The Art of Creating, where we not only dive deep into recognizing who you are, but also connect with your heart so that you can develop a vision of what you truly love, but also share the mechanics of the creative process to turn that dream into a reality. And the outcome, that you are empowered to become the prime creative force in your life and create what you truly love. And that's not a function of changing circumstances, more healing or outside help, but just becoming aware of what's true and what isn't. Join now. Something also, since you mentioned the anchors that, that appear mm -hmm. as soon as we start to go into a direction, is what we notice also in with Amanita Muscari or with the deep dives is that sometimes people are being brought into an, they land in an experience that clearly seems like something that is happening for, in a different life, like something that they are at places they are visiting where there is maybe intense trauma happening or something that that seems like an anchor or a cause of of something that has its reverberations in this life and we 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 take this frame of we live many lives because it makes so much more sense and it and also that that we have lived many lives where we ha had intense horrible painful experiences or you know either as victims or as perpetrators and we died maybe from this experience so there was no way of integrating that in that lifetime so we have to assume that we have like a backlog of a lot of stuff that needs to be integrated and maybe the the anchors that we're having in this life are just fractal reiterations of an, of an original trauma that happened way back somewhere. Like an echo. Yeah, like mm. an echo from the past. Mm. And if we take our, our orientational frame, make it larger than just this one lifetime, and we can understand that, yeah, sometimes we are meeting a resistance that doesn't have its origin in this life, you know, we are we, we need to work with with feeling states or with with um trauma that or that, situations or situations also that that we can't really explain to ourselves with our life story in this incarnation then uh we have a um i think a more real frame to work in mm -hmm. and this is also something that we see in the deep dives with amanita muscari sometimes people have experiences where we clearly see okay they are working on an anchor from another lifetime there is, a, there is an emotional content, there is an experience that was fully, wasn't fully lived through. And uh, there is a tendency to repeat these things in other lives. We call it recurrence. Uh, the same scenario, but with different players are occurring again. A new opportunity to experience what wasn't experienced back then. A seed for a new plant or a seed for a new experience in this life. And sometimes it makes no sense. We have no idea. Why is this happening to me? There's nothing. I haven't wished for this. And sometimes that is the anchor that they have to confront. It's a remnant. It's an echo. It's a recurrence. And um, also that is something that we can mention then from deep dives, that 
recurrence was a philosophical idea that was popular in the beginning of the 1900s. Recurrence meant that things keep repeating themselves in your life on different mm -hmm. levels and in different frequencies. The same type of relationship with the same horrible mm -hmm. woman over and over again, mm -hmm. or the same financial situation, no matter what you try to do, mm -hmm. it's recurring, it's recurring, it's happening over and over again. And we can see in people who have deep dives, they can recognize short frequencies of recurrences, we call them loops, something keep just happening over and over and over again, this cutting out of concept of time, but also lifelong occurrences or recurrences where um, a similar situation keep appearing in life after life after life until we have the capacity to incorporate it or digest it or learn from it or uh, increase our our qualities that, that are necessary to not have that type of experience in our lives. Mm. So this, this whole thing with recurrence seems to us as a fact at this point. We can now say that almost conclusively, recurrence is a fact. It's not just a philosophical idea. It's, it's yeah, and, and this is the funny thing because in Amanita you can have kind of like funny loops because you're suddenly stuck in a situation like needing to go to the toilet over and over again or being stuck in the toilet or or other loops, you know, that are much more like, you know, experiencing eternity over and over again or whatever it is. But it um, it's it, it has been looked at a little bit as a as an interesting quirk of Amanita, but but we or really a or a side effect or something that is specific to to this experience. But we really see that we are getting a chance to gradually understand more and more a very real phenomenon, which is recurrence, which is that we are in loops. We are, this is how we are um, experiencing things and learning things is in loops, is in, is in re repetition of, of circumstances until we get enough self-activation, until we wake enough up so that we can rise within, within that we can wake up to our own self-responsibility. Almost like instinctively evolve past that uh, necessity of having such an experience, like walking on a street, falling into the, the pit over and over again until we learn to walk to the side and avoid it. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so we, we could talk about <laughs> yeah. many, many subjects related to deep dives. I see that we, are, yeah. we are, uh, have been on now for a while. Maybe we yes. want to the two parts i don't know but yes please, uh, anything you want yeah very insightful com conversation i have plenty of more questions maybe we can do another conversation also see what our yeah. listeners respond or have for questions we can pick them up so please let us know comment uh on the show yeah what do you think should we save further questions for another idea. conversation Let's see what the comments say and what people want mm -hmm. to know more about. And we we have as a policy, we can say, or our our intention is to never conceal anything and be fully open with everything that we know, mm -hmm. because we believe that knowledge is free. The limitation to understanding the knowledge is a natural thing and that we can't do anything about. But we don't want to lock or hide or conceal anything away from people. So we are very open with any information that we can give. And that said, we are also just two people on our journey, gradually, you know, discovering a reality, you know, like everyone else, you know, so this is, this is also, we're not in that way, super special. So we're just we're on this just journey together, people, just like everyone else, like you, we are discovering the same truths, really, you know, and, and it's wonderful to be able to exchange hmm. findings and insights and come from a different angle or look, I have this tool. Ah, oh, yeah, try this tool so that we can together you know, liberate ourselves from this dream and wake up and create a beautiful reality mm -hmm. that we all want to be in. It's called for, isn't it? Because the, <laughs> the options that are presented to us mm. are quite gloomy, to say the least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I totally agree. So very much appreciated to being here and sharing uh, this intimate, insightful uh, knowing and experience with Amanita. I know you have a website and a community. Would you want to share with our listeners about what it is about and how they could learn more and work with you? Yes. So we, we saw the tendency years ago that the social networks were regulated and, and hiding things and misleading people. We didn't like that. We set up to make our own little network. We call it Will Be One. And there's a link then in connection to this video. And anyone who has an interest in personal development, essential development, Amanita Muscaria, uh, reality, 
real uh, interaction between real people are of course invited to to take part uh, we share a lot of information there we also present our findings and uh, the events that we are doing there are products one can purchase if one doesn't find a manita yourself in the forest. There are lots of web shops. We also have one where you can buy it. We're doing a training where we accompany people on their journey. And if you're really ad ad adventurous, manita. you can come to a deep dive. <laughs> or to workshops. We also do workshops where you get experiences mm. around essence, personality, becoming more your true self. Mm. That is not so much, you know, connected with the actual substance, but it's still very good to, to create this inner reference point in yourself. And there are lots of really cool and very heartwarming people on the platform, yeah. which also doubles as a dating platform, by the way. Yeah. Amazing. So if that's okay, we will put the link into the description of this conversation. And so you can all look it up, join and uh, learn and explore, make your own experiences. Well, thank you so much for this insightful conversation, Marianne and Johan. Thank, thank you. you so thank much, you very Simon. much, Simon. Yeah. So always a pleasure talking to you. Very much. Oh, likewise. Yeah, it's uh, it's so interesting to a group explore of people them. Not tuning into the same things. Yeah. It's so clear. It's emerging among groups of people. Yeah. Hmm. It's wonderful. Well. Thank you both. And also thank you, dear listeners, for being with us. Stay true to yourself and see you next time. Yeah.